everyone, and welcome back to the show. The Atheist Experience is live February 9th, 2003. I'm your host, Martin Wagner, and you're in, my co-host as always. Afternoon. And joining us again on the show after a long absence, Jeff D. Hey, folks. Very happy to have you back. I'm thrilled to be back. I'm studio. sure you are, yes. Well, uh... <laughs> We are sponsored by Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. ACA has weekly meetings every Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m. at Hot Jumbo Bagels, located downtown at 307 West 5th Street, between Guadalupe and Lavaca, except for the first Sunday of each month when we have our monthly lecture series in the mayor room of the Austin History Center at 9th and Guadalupe. Our next lecture will be March the 2nd, and we don't know who it'll be, but uh, as soon as we know, we'll tell you, fine folks. Uh, the usual uh, rundown of uh, beginning of show announcements, Godless Gamers, uh, still takes place every Monday night, 7 o'clock p.m. at the home of Russell and Virginia Glasser. And Atheist Happy Hour takes place at about 7.30ish, it runs all evening, at Antonio's Tex-Mex, uh, which is located near the intersection of I-35 and 183. Uh, the Nonprofits, our weekly internet radio show, uh, hosted by this man, is currently on hiatus, uh, but... Uh, Past episodes, about the last dozen or so episodes, can be downloaded on our website on the radio show page. They are MP3 streams, and it's all kinds of fun. And your appearance on the show today is a total setup. I've arranged for every member of ACA to call up and harangue you to get nonprofits back. Oh, great. On the, yeah. <laughs> well, no, not really, but okay. it's uh, but we miss it, and it was a fine show. We've gotten and, a lot of emails <laughs> from uh, listeners yeah. around the country yeah. uh, saying that they miss it and want it back. But, you know, yeah, we did... You know how tough it is to do a it weekly is. show, and yeah. after a while, the grind gets to you. We just need a break. Mm -hmm. So we're taking a break. Yeah, well, that's fine. I'm sure when you're ready. And it's easier be... to take a break on that, right? Because you don't have right. to worry about getting rescheduled. Yeah, getting yeah. a new it's slot. Like you have to do here on public access. I know, where you have yeah. to like work in through their we whole can. system. If we it's decided, just your deal. Right? If we decided next Saturday we want to go back out on the air, we can do that. Yeah, and Reggie will just you know do it, so it's not a big deal. Well, yeah, probably. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, uh, so past episodes on our website on the radio show page of the nonprofits. <laughs> the University Atheists and Agnostics uh, meet every Friday uh, at the UT campus at Rainy Hall, uh, room, uh, room 3.102A. Uh, yeah. Yes, that's it. 3.102A. Friday's at 4 p.m. This is a fine uh, new uh, student, uh, a University of Texas um, registered student organization. Uh, if you are a UT student and faculty member, uh, there's the email address uaa at mail.utexas.edu to get more information. They're starting up their second semester. They had a very successful first semester. Uh, so there they are, Fridays at 4 p.m. in Rainy Hall, 3.102A. Uh, great. Okay, so I think that's it. Uh, lecture, da -da 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 -da. yeah, boy, announcements just went lickety split this morning. Good, I like the pace. Let's of take it. calls. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, we have to give them a minute. To, uh, <laughs> we have I to miss doing the show. We have to get them upset a bit. We have okay. to get them upset first, and then they'll call. All right. So mm, evolution. Yeah, <laughs> that usually does it. <laughs> that could, or cloning, or any number of things that goes on. Yeah. Uh, but maybe yeah. there's something in the news this week. What's happening uh, this, oh, okay. this week in the world, Ashley? A couple quick stories. Um, the European Union is trying to set up their new constitution mm -hmm. and get all of their bills ratified and do all that kind of fun stuff in setting up a nation, essentially. And uh, they have left out something in the constitution, thankfully. Mm. All references to God mm. are simply exempt. They are not in there at all. Um, basically, this has been presented. It's not an official one. It's a draft. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be, you know, voted on and amended and stuff like that, I think, this summer, they said. Um, but as of how it is today, there is no mention of God whatsoever. Um, what is basically in it is statements for respect of members' countries' national identity and for human rights, as well as commitments to social justice and the environment. But none of the chapters mention any deity or any explicitly religious or Christian values supposed to underpin the European project. Some countries, particularly Poland, a future EU member, has argued for such a mention. Um, I'm sure the Vatican can't possibly be happy about it. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, there are other people who are who are saying they should have something in there because it's trying to <clears throat> recognize the European heritage and stuff like that. It's in the past, and so it should be there in the present, apparently. Well, European heritage um, is any number of faith ex traditions. Exactly. And, you know. It's a big warring area. Yeah. It's some parts of history, so... Yeah. Um, I mean, if they want to talk about their European heritage, they should go all the way back to the Roman and the Olympian gods and the Greek gods and, and 
You know, Thanks they, Zeus for the European Union. Sure, exactly. Um, yeah, let's no. revi- yeah, revive the there's Olympians. Nothing, yeah. yeah, there's nothing about wacky old beliefs that makes them automatically deserve a place in the Constitution. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But a lot of people argue that. It's like, oh, these have been with us for centuries, so that's why they need to <laughs> So what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, our belief that the world was flat was with us a yeah, lot longer exact, than that. Exactly. Indeed. We don't Where write that, that into the Constitution. Where's no? that one? <clears throat> uh, what I do like, though, the draft states that among its main objectives uh, are peace, the well-being of peoples, com- competitiveness, and the discovery of space. Hmm. Which that, is very interesting. We've discovered space already. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, I assume exploration. They probably mean but, exploration. But yeah, yeah Europe yeah. Right. apparently isn't doing very much with that, though. But, <laughs> at least not directly. They may be contributing to other countries. No, but that would be great if they... If but, uh, they uh, yeah. but yeah, if they get in on that game. <laughs> yeah, because, so. I mean, the Chinese are, are, are getting busy yeah. on it. And, uh, yeah, they're pulling so up I think the they want to say, ooh, oh, we're kind of falling behind in the space race. So. Yeah. so that would be good, yeah, if, if, if yeah, this if sort they of can motivated something. them to uh, expand their scientific uh, Exactly. Endeavors. Now they have a bigger pool of uh, people and yeah. knowledge and everything like that to pull from. More broke countries trying to get in. Exactly. And, yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, so. you know. Never well, well, good for them. I mean, it's it's good that they're trying to be ecumenical and yeah. not to, you know, just try to say, okay, and there's this one faith tradition we're going to respect. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Because it's, it's hard enough to do it when you have one country that you're trying to draft a constitution yeah. for. They're but trying to draft something thousands. that is a, a confederacy of, what, like uh, 13 countries? Yeah. So... Yeah, it's you know, not going to be nearly as easy. And then you have to you have to make more concessions to be fair and right. And yeah. unlike you know the, our, our thirteen colonies, when mm-hmm. we yeah. felt, uh, wrote a constitution, and uh, we couldn't just we could they can't just run roughshod over the rights and beliefs of the. Uh, of the uh, indigenous po- indigenous populations. Well, they tried. Yeah. I mean, they, they did well, run I mean, roughshod over them. Nowadays, yeah, oh, nowadays, nowadays, sure. Europe can't do that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. nowadays, human <laughs> humans in general understand that everybody deserves rights, not just the ruling uh, yeah. culture. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so. Well, good for them. Okay, hmm. next one. Getting back to Europe, somewhat. The Vatican. Ah. They have come out with a press release statement type document of 92 pages. Um, they said that New Age spiritualism's promise of special powers and self fulfillment cannot substitute for Christian faith. <laughs> turning, <laughs> to, <laughs> turning to New Age. Don't believe their practices. nonsense. Believe exactly, ours. Yeah, believe ours. Just, yeah. Turning to New Age practices from yoga and shamanism to reading the Harry Potter children's books <laughs> that extol magic. Reflect the spiritual hunger of contemporary men and women. Um, the document said persistence of the immensely popular New Age trend shows their people today yearn for a deeper spirituality, for something which will touch their hearts, and for a way of making sense of a confusing and often alienating world. Hmm. So apparently they're saying, you know, New Ageism can't do it. You can't get through yoga and meditation, so come to church instead and believe mm-hmm. our garbage. Yeah. Uh, this is no different than, like, some TV commercial that says, here's our detergent, and here's four of the other leading brands. Notice how ours gets the, the, the whites whiter. The, the difference, you know? except, the difference is, except the difference is on that commercial, they can actually show the detergents. Yeah, right. Unless they fudge the results. Real, there's you know? something really yeah. there. Though. That's there's true, like, yeah. There's exactly. physical objects. So this true. is even worse. To compare. True, true. Uh, so this is like a bad commercial. Yeah. Oh. Although what is odd, they notice that, you know, shamanism and yoga and Harry Potter, the evil of Harry Potter. But then they kind of take that back. Uh, later on in the same argument, Father Fleetwood said that the Harry Potter series, now in its fifth installment, may be harmless enough in an open in opening youthful minds to faith. I don't think that any of us grew up without the imaginary world of fairies, magicians, angels, and witches, he said. They are not bad or a manner of anti-Christian ideology. They help children understand the difference between good and evil. Yeah, Which, right. Well, well it's, it's, like, it's like they always do with religions, right? As soon as they get something that is successful that they're competing against, first yeah. they demonize it. Uh-huh. And then try then and when they it. realize, Yeah, when they realize that, they're, that yeah. yelling and screaming about it doesn't make it go away, then they try to stick their own hooks into it. Yeah. Yeah. Although, let's, it. although let's also remember that this is the Vatican, which is the home of the Catholic Church, yeah, I mean, they're which not many as, p- people consider to be the Antichrist anyway. Yeah. And, and they're, so, they don't, they're not as, as <laughs> quite it, as it's, unidirectional. It's fundamentalists who are saying that Harry Potter should be yeah. burned. I mean, in, fundamentalist Protestantism so. and evangelical exactly. Protestantism the is, are, is a much is an even more strident, 
you know, primitive uh, way of, of, of practicing the faith and of, of right. than Catholicism well, the, is. The Catholic Church may not have gone through a phase of Harry Potter bashing, but yeah. it, once again, here they are mm-hmm. trying to put their religious hooks into it and yeah. say, well, this popular thing, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you, can, you can use that to teach your kids spirituality. And what does that do? Turns those kids into consumers for the Catholic product. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So now we just have to wait and see what uh, the Catholic product will be that will... Attempt to well spirituality. Mar- they said you know, market into uh, it's the same product they've the Harry had. Potter. Yeah, yeah, right. So. People like yeah. people enjoy fantasies about magical stuff. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. Therefore, <laughs> therefore, <laughs> there's this some. The adult there's version. some. There's sort of, for there's some legitimate place in life for Christianity. Well, you know, if if they were saying that the point of Christianity is to is to address individuals. Uh, enjoyment of fantasy fiction. Yeah, I'd say, you know, yeah, we already have Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm sure. Right? We have Lord <laughs> of the Rings. We have a wide variety of things that people don't have, that are not being asked to actually believe yeah. Yeah. that appeal to exactly the same interests and, um, you know. Yeah. And it's also probably yeah. true that the Catholic Church realizes. You know, the Harry Potter series is already so popular, it doesn't do us any good to suddenly be the guys out there alienating our... A bunch of people who are already Catholics are reading these books. Their kids are reading these books. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so right. it doesn't do us any good to alienate the people who we already right. have in our pews so instead, to tell them that this stuff is bad. So, so let's instead they try to latch make on it okay. and yeah. benefit from it. Yeah. Which it, it makes sense to do, and the, and the evangelicals haven't learned that yet. You know, if, if the evangelicals you know just are so strident that they yeah. can't well, get behind... Uh, the whole list. <laughs> advocate see, this stuff. No, but, but, <laughs> and you don't know what form that's going to take. I mean, um, there, I there were... I, I remember when I was going to, uh, to high school, mm-hmm. the standard uh, fundamentalist Christian response to rock music was, oh, it's evil yeah. and you shouldn't oh, have that. Yeah, right. well, and they screamed and yelled and, uh, about that. And rather than saying, oh, well, you know, we're sorry, uh, you know, Beatles... When we called you worshippers of Satan, we didn't really mean it. We're all friends. Instead of doing Our that, there's, they still say that all the rock music is bad. Except now they have their own Christian rock. rock yes. Yeah, Christian See, rock. So that's the way they get their hooks in there. Yeah. They, they find well that there's this thing that's popular and we can't get rid of it. We better have so some let's of our use own. it. Yeah. yeah. So let's so use it as a m- copy the form. Yeah. yeah. So when is sure. the fun- so when are the fundamentalists going to yes. come out with a Harry Potter ripoff? And say, you know, a young child called Jesus Christ in his day. <laughs> that would he be heal the yeah. sick and walk on water. Yeah. So the little see, boy's got little Jesus puncture, crater. He's got a little puncture wound. He's got on he's his his shaped like lightning bolts. Yeah. Oh, and it's, it's the second coming. See, and he oh, goes to the special go. academy yeah. for uh-huh. for, for, for revived yeah, uh, messiahs. Exactly. <laughs> Potential there, messiahs. Don't give him any ideas, and, guys. And so, little little Mithras is the uh, Draco Malfoy guy. Dra- Draco Mithras is his nemesis. That would be hilarious. Oh boy! Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> that's true. Though it's just like and with a, little crosses around and waving yeah. things. Yeah. Like, uh, oh wow! Uh, what fun! <laughs> Now we should get some calls. Uh, could be, yeah. <laughs> it's sort of... Okay. Let's uh, annoy some other this? people, though. Oh, boy. Uh, okay. Uh, everyone knows about Columbia. Hmm. And uh, there is a group that has come out, and it's uh, the Westboro Baptist Church, ah, which is the Fred Phelps guy. The we've gods, heard of those people before, haven't we? Yes. God's hate fags. Every now and then we'll Good. report on them when they do some kind of, you know, the wacky zany thing. This guy is the They're bottom feeder again. of all bottom feeders. He is the worst He is, is the worst scum you can possibly come yeah. across, bar none. Yeah. Um, he put out a press release, a uh, news release, about Columbia. And basically said that... Put that up on screen. This, this is just, a space okay. shuttle Columbia, Yes. Right? This is a space shuttle okay. Columbia. Yeah. All right. Put Break that up on screen. Let's, Let's just show people how, zoom in on that. how insane that is. So. I mean, that's just uh, beyond belief. But yes, know. what he is essentially saying is Head. that... Well, it's the headline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Looky yeah. there. The Columbia 7 are in hell. Yes. What compassionate Christian love that is. Exactly. Listen, Listen up, America. America. This is our report on Columbia. 
The seven are in hell, and then they have a little description down there. Uh-huh. Um, and so they, they have a roving reporter correspondent in hell confirming this, right? Apparently, yes. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I mean, they have a couple biblical quotes here. Apparently, their only reason for this uh-huh. is that since America has gays in it, then mm-hmm. God is striking down Columbia as an example or something like that to... To just kind of show off his power and just you know sure they use the they, they use the like uh, the attack in the World Trade Center for yeah. exactly the same, same thing, thing. Yeah. yeah 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 Falwell said that it was because yeah you know, we were such a godless liberal uh, yeah. gay you know yeah. ACLU loving nation that God lowered his magic shield uh, yes his magical shield <laughs> of protection yeah, t- took the How shields you know down that yeah. the, the, the Columbia didn't actually you know accidentally Hit ran into to God's the- <laughs> protective <shield. laughs> and, and, <laughs> We don't know that. Yeah. Yeah, the Columbia. Maybe one of the guys in Columbia discovered that he was gay while he was in space. Well, I guess it'd be two of them. Mm. <laughs> at, least, at least one. Why? <laughs> and and God got angry and he put up the protective shield so we so could get come that back. extra yeah. uh, homosexual guy living in the U.S. Yes. Could have been that. Does Fred Phelps explore that possibility in his article? I think not. Mm. Nope. I don't think Fred Phelps explores <laughs> much of anything. He just uh, he just lets fly with yeah. hysteria. Yeah, the Columbia Space Shuttle symbolizes America's superior technology. Superior technology, including military killing prowess, makes America the only superpower. Okay, but but the thing is, um, are you are aware that the entire Phelps family are lawyers. In fact, well, the Westboro you, you Baptist Church are... Yeah. What? Fred Phelps, he was disbarred, though. Fred but Phelps. Yeah. So what? Uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the, his entire organization is also a law firm. Okay. Mm. What Fred Phelps is all about oh, is annoying people so much that they'll take swipes at him or his yeah. people in public. So literal swipes. Then, swipes to so that he him. can sue them, and mm. that is how he gets his money. Yeah. Right. By he's he's a professional scam artist, basically. Yeah. He's all so about litigants. he's all about angering yeah. people. So yeah. You know, I don't even. This, mm. I, that's actually one of the few cases of religious based craziness that. I'm not really will, really willing to yeah. say is the responsibility of religion. Yeah, because yeah. it's not. No, it's not. It's I mean, so they could have picked anything. Right? They yeah. could have picked anything, though. Yeah. yeah. Right. What any cause and any justification, and their tactic is be as annoying as possible. Try to get people to take a swing at you, and then sue them in court and get money. Yeah. But but the fact that this guy does think that he is you know Jesus's right hand man. I don't know that all... he actually thinks that. Well, he may ha- he may be so delusional. It looks like that he does. It, he is, he is just so, such a psycho. Yeah. It just, it, it's an but example it of anybody. how... It, it, but it could have been anybody. Yeah. It True. could be atheists. Could, I can easily imagine, yeah. though I would not like to see, an atheist organization <laughs> that, just, that yeah. its whole purpose is to be as offensive as possible and then yeah. sue the who, Christians that take swings who, at Who could ever do that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Who would ever? So. Yeah. Well, some people think that that's what we're here to do, but it's not true. Um, it's, no. Uh, it, the, Please don't take I think swings at us. Yeah. <laughs> The, but you know, but this just does go to show that you do generally tend to find people who are this extremist yeah. in their views do tend to gravitate towards, if not religious, various weird some superstitious, kind of some, 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 sort, of, some yeah. sort of superstitious, pseudoscientific, yeah, yeah. irrational belief system. Because it's a lot easier to hook somebody into that sort of thing uh, because it's all based on authoritarianism anyway. And so how can anybody, um, when, when the very idea of expressing a critical voice is uh, suppressed with you know physical violence and beatings and yeah. all sorts of you know horrible you know like cultish mind control techniques. You know how can anybody uh, resist it? So hmm. you know yeah. you do find that I mean his his little Westboro Baptist Church I have heard described as a sect as a cult. You know he does he runs it with an iron fist. It's not just your neighborhood Baptist church. <laughs> um, yeah, and, not uh, with these people. And they talk about you know they use words like escaping. To describe, you know, the people and his family members who have left. Yeah. So when you're using that kind of language, there's a little bit more that's going on. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, and he knows how uh, to use the language, talking about how Texas is the home of fag enabler Bush, and <laughs> any other interpretation of the tragic events of February 1st is rank atheism and fag junk theology by sodomite propagandists. <laughs> wow, this is well, one sick and twisted puppy. Yeah. Well, but you know, uh, everyone knows that though. He has no allies. Yeah. He has no defenders. Yeah. You know, so they, it's. Yeah, you know. there are so few out there. Yeah, so. you know, we are not going to give his website. Yeah, that yeah. loon does not. In any way, any more publicity. Yeah, and, and besides, it's, it seems to be down most of the time. I mean, uh, you try to really? hit the URL, and it, it doesn't come up more often than not lately. So okay. either it's just 
you know, the server is uh, saying, we don't want this, really. <laughs> or people are just, something's going on. Yeah. But anyway, well, if there is a hell, it's, you know, it's reserved for the likes of Fred Phelps. That's all I can yeah. say. Yeah. You know, so. that, you know. What else before we go on okay, to one calls and letters and Okay, one more last quick story completely off. Of Let me go ahead and again put that phone number up to uh, encourage our callers. Uh, homeopathy. Hmm. Which is this pseudo scientific? No, and Fred Phelps really yeah, hates he that. Hates that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, homeopathy, homeopathy. Yeah. is this pseudo scientific medical technology type thing, uh -huh. where essentially what they do is they put a couple drops of some healing potion into water and then dilute the heck out of it. Yeah, and so you by get the like way, one molecule per bottle. And by the way, they they call they 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 think of the ingredient they're putting into the. The water and then diluting until there's not even a molecule of it left. Yeah. They they call that uh, you know medicine of some kind. Mm. But the principle underlying homeopathy is um, water has memory. That that yeah. if you want to cure somebody of say of of some uh, symptom like vomiting, mm -hmm. okay, then the medicine you're supposed to give them is something to make them vomit. Really, just yeah. exceedingly diluted. Yeah, I mean it's almost rational because. You can develop somebody's. Uh, you can you can train somebody's immune Immunity. system. Yeah. yeah, right. That is what. I yeah. mean, that's part of the that's part of the pr principle behind inoculation. But yeah. we're not talking. But here we're not talking different. about. Yeah. we're not talking about viruses. Mm -hmm. yeah. right or yeah. microbes. We are talking about treating symptoms with like you know they'll have some some herbal leaf that people yeah. will vomit if they if they eat a whole bunch of it. Mm -hmm. And then that's the ingredient. It's yeah. not training your body about anything. Yeah. It's completely nuts. Especially when it's as diluted as it is. And Essentially they, what they, they do is... And then they dilute is, it to the yeah. point where in many, in many, many, many of them... Yeah, I mean, the, the kind of thing that you They consider the shaking very important. The kind oh, of thing yeah. you're talking about is you take a Kick leaf... one molecule around. One leaf from the tree, they like go to a swimming pool and swish it in. And there you go. There's yeah. your holy medicine. It's, it's, exact, it's exactly <laughs> that. So, you know, nuts. take a little yeah. ounce of that, and there's your medicine, sir. And, Which you would think and that in response to this kind of criticism, there have been homeopathic practi practitioners who have gone so far as to suggest that water has some kind of magical memory. property yeah. to yeah. remember, remember what was what in has it. What was been in it, dissolved, yeah. in, even though yeah. if there is none of that left. So, like, chocolate milk is essentially <laughs> homeopathic, if you were to think of it. Along those lines, but that's because well, you dissolve. You know, yeah, but you it's still a, there. It's yeah. Yeah, it's but if you only there, use yeah. one little grain of the, nest, grain the of Nestle, Nestle Quick, of Nestle yeah, Quick in yeah, a gallon of milk, that's it. Yeah, and you've got homeopathic you chocolate, chocolate milk. milk. Yeah. Gosh, that's brilliant. <laughs> homeopathic chocolate milk. The world yeah. is so lucky that that most atheists are t have are you know are too honorable. To pursue these get rich quick schemes that yeah. we see everybody else yeah. on the planet pursuing. Yeah, I've often thought how easy I it would be of several of them. <laughs> to make a lot of money to just like try to uh, you know market some book on you know, your uh, develop your psychic powers at home yeah, or something. I mean, yeah, I mean you can make a killing we with had that. Arlo Pignani, who has been on the show yeah. uh, many times, uh, showing off his <laughs> religious yeah, paraphernalia collection. Paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. I mean, he he, uh, he did our lecture series last weekend and. I mean that's that's just painfully obvious. You look at some yeah. of the things Christians, yeah. for example, but yeah. not just Christians, uh, people of all religions and weird occult mm, the Mormons pseudoscience have a lot, beliefs. Yeah. yeah, the things that they sell to each other are so crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to imagine that they're serious, right? You yeah. think, gosh, there's got to be the T-shirts alone, Bible yeah, exactly. man. There has got to be yeah. some really cynical dude <laughs> sucking up Christian dollars just, as yeah. last Thing. as he can get them. Yeah. But no, apparently, in uh, most of these cases, as far as we can tell, they they yeah. really mean it. It's yeah. a real they really thing. Think somehow kids are going to benefit from video Bible adventures man. of a guy dressed in a superhero costume with Bible powers going around punching bad guys. Yeah, <laughs> killing them, beating up the killing killing doers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the. Um, it, it, it all comes down to you can attach. It seems like you can attach faith to just about anything, religion, just to just about anything, and the faithful will be more receptive to it. It will just sell better. It not only works for these Christian products, but in politics, mm -hmm. you know, any politician yeah. comes out and is publicly pious. That's how you get votes these days. Sure, you know, it's and, uh, and, and not just religion, of course, right? Yeah. I mean, anything, any kind of nonsense, you can get large yeah. enough people to believe it. But once, specifically, religion and our take culture has of that. a big has a big advantage to it. So, and the difference is, if you can get people to believe something that's true mm -hmm. in large numbers, yeah. and then you do exactly the same thing, right? You then 
say, you know, uh, okay, we need everybody to understand that washing your hands helps prevent uh, the spread of disease, right? Uh -huh. You get people to understand that. That happens to be true. Uh -huh. Get a lot of people to understand it. You can sell them soap. Uh -huh. But soap <laughs> then is not a ripoff. Right, yeah. soap is an actual product. But then you can that sell them Christian soap. Addresses, yeah. But <laughs> then have... you say once you got that, then it's like, well, really, diseases are demons, right? Uh -huh. Little tiny demons. Sure, you get some, get some popular fad to arise where uh, you know demons are now little things that live in the grime under your fingernails, and then they sell special <laughs> Christian soap that will not only clean up the dirt but also yeah. protect your soul. Yeah. And then you can sell that to the people who believe the nonsense. Speaking of homie, up, there's a guy on one of the Christian TV channels on digital cable who has his miracle healing water that he will sell you. Wow. <laughs> that it's same tap thing. water. <laughs> uh, more or less. I, I don't even, I don't know if it's, if it's just tap water that he is, you know, prayed over or what have you, but it's his miracle Christian healing water. And what do you want to bet? He makes some good money at it. Oh, sure. Of course. Yeah, I'm sure of he makes course. some good money. There so. are vast numbers of people in, the, in our country who actually yeah. believe this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, for the record, homeopathy in general is bunk. And according to this article, uh, a remedy called Arnica it specifically is bunk. Yeah. Uh, that one is apparently... That's the one they've tested most recently, right? Yes. Arnica <clears throat> tablets are available in most high street chemists and are usually sold to control bruising, reduces swelling, and generally help recovery after an injury or operation. Right. Uh -huh. And so essentially what they did is they took some patients who were having wrist surgery, um, and they get the three different groups. One control just gave them, you know, sugar tablets. Another one they gave a strong solution. Another one a weak solution. And they had, like, you know, computer models. They actually looked at these people and, you know, measured the amount of swelling and bruising and stuff like that. And they found that it does absolutely nothing. Yeah. So, so no no better results than the control group. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And the rationale that they give for a lot of people <laughs> saying that, you know, homeopathy really helps, it really works, is because if I go out and take it and it does help, chances are I might talk about it. Yeah. If you take it and nothing happens... You don't mention it. There's, there's well, that's, that's, only that's, that's remembering. Yeah. That's, that's the post hoc reasoning. Exactly. That's the post hoc That's remembering yeah. the hits and forgetting the misses. Exactly. There's yeah. that. Also, have you noticed a lot of this stuff? Um, and I'm this stuff meaning new age stuff uh, treatments <laughs> in general. <laughs> okay. They are now. Uh, it's, there's. It, it's often now marketed as a as complementary. Medicine. Yes. Yeah. So you're supposed to take it yeah. in addition to your regular medical treatment, mm -hmm. right? As if you know there's somehow something missing from your regular, your regular medical, medical treatment. treatment. That doesn't provide. <clears throat> but what does that what does that tell you? Well, that tells you that the people, a lot of the people taking this stuff and believing that it works, are also getting Actually proper treated. medical care. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the proper proper medical care that has been subject subject to rigorous scientific testing that is actually helping them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not the And they usually the don't mention cure. that nearly as much nope. as their special homeopathy tactics. And what, what, so what does the homeopathy crowd say about this most recent Arnica study? Have they oh. fired back and said, oh, this is not fairly done, and, yeah. which is the sort of thing they usually do? Uh, Dr. Janet Richardson, chairman of the Research Council for Complementary Medicine. Complementary Medicine. Uh -huh. There you go. Uh, said, <laughs> tell you. the results suggest that people <clears throat> undergoing carpal tunnel surgery are not helped by Arnica. But this does not mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the blood vessels. Exactly. Yeah. The swelling Are different in uh, carpal tunnel. Around the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is This does not mean that Arnica is of no help with other conditions. It just doesn't help in this one. Yeah. But it does help. <laughs> Sold to control bruising, reduce swelling, and generally help recovery after an injury or operation. It seems like carpal tunnel sent kind of falls into right. all that. After yeah. surgery, you're going to have bruising, you're going to have swelling, and you're going to have an injury. So you're basically well, saying, well, it works. The magic in the water yeah. doesn't work around the wrist area. Exactly. Yeah. It, it kind of avoids, it, it, it jumps over it and goes in your hand. So it yeah. works except for when it doesn't, is what she's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. Well, she's, 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 so. what, is she, what she is insisting on mm -hmm. is, that we, is that now the medical community has to test this quack cure. On with every single symptom. Every possible right. It's condition. the god of the gaps yeah. Yeah. applied to homeopathic a, yeah. a homeopathic remedy, right? Yeah. Oh, well, it didn't work in that case. We didn't find God living in that and the cloud. Wrist, so so yeah. check that cloud. <laughs> well, mm, he's up Rocks. higher than that. He's above the clouds in space. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've been to space. We didn't see God. Mm, mm. He's in another dimension. See? No, yeah. he, he lives in a parallel universe. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. So apparently... Excuses, excuses, so their new, excuses. The that's the convenient bottle. thing of having this invisible magical entity that can magically possess whatever property 
property you need him to possess. But check it you out. Need him to possess you, read it. The old, you read the Old Testament. He is not an invisible magical entity. He is He's a very t- big tough guy that lives up on a mountain. And oh, but that's just the Old Testament, stuff. Jeff. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the, the the reason why the Old the Old Testament God depicts God differently, mm-hmm. uh, the Old Testament re- depicts God differently, is that over time people learn stuff. You mm-hmm. know, they went on up, up on Mount uh, Sinai or whatever the Ten Sinai. Commandments. That's Sinai, yeah. and and he wasn't there. Oh. So, <laughs> oh well, uh, what we meant was yeah. Uh, yeah, she added that the new study was poorly designed and based on a small sample. Of In course, addition, yes. some patients did not necessarily follow the tr- treatment properly. Uh-huh. Yeah, which which could be very valid. valid Except it isn't. <laughs> like so, so. But still, it's yeah. it's yeah. And you see the same kind of thinking um, in in our time. From uh, philosophers attempting to justify belief in God, mm-hmm. we had this guy send an email to our Ask an Atheist email list, mm-hmm. yeah. and his entire argument was, um, he was he was saying, "Yeah, it's true. We can't prove that there's a God in some parallel dimension with some powers we can't understand who can interfere." In our world, in a way that is, that is effective but undetectable, you can't prove he doesn't exist. So we can explain things about how our universe works by saying it is a manifestation of the action of this invisible entity in another dimension who Which changes things in our universe explain. in ways that we can't detect. And it's like, dude, all you have done is you've just said that... Uh, that <laughs> because we can't prove your God doesn't exist, you then think you're accomplishing something by it, by making up he, making up your God as an explanation for things that you don't understand in our universe. Mm. Yeah, and so it's, it's, it's you have this another, another un- nonsense. unknowable being who does unknowable things in unknowable ways. Right. Yeah, they and they think that that constitutes some sort of an explanation of something. Yeah, but that, look what they're reduced to, right? Yeah. It used to be all you had to do. It used to be, you know, you had to get it, put on your sandals, and walk to the top of Mount Sinai and look yeah. around for the, you know, the 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 burned out stump of the bush, mm-hmm. or you know, the 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 stone blocks that made God's house when he lived there, <laughs> and you don't see any of that stuff. And it's like, huh, well, uh, okay, yeah, then yeah. he goes up in the sky. The, he is not, God. The God of the gaps has now been pushed back so far yeah. that he's that in a whole lot. The philosophers of theology (laughs) are stuck with nothing left but to try to justify, you know, they've got nothing left but to try to defend the idea that they can imagine that there's a God and not be completely laughed at. (laughs) That's all they have left. They have booted him completely out of this universe. Yeah. Well, it's it's like, uh, and, and, and these little bits, these little uncertainties. Yeah, uh, uh, um, supernaturalists and religious, uh, they love those, right? Because sure. any, anything that you can, like, find... Anything I explain, that, it's gotten. For, like our caller last week on the show who tried to say, uh, oh, well, Einstein showed that atoms have all this empty <laughs> yeah, space empty in them. Space. And, and so it's like, oh, okay, so so what you're saying, so the empty space is where you get to stick your spirits yeah. within the empty space <laughs> of the atom. So it's that's even smaller they, than a molecule. Yeah, so that's... A, smaller than an okay, atom. we're going to go ahead and kick that, tea, uh, that uh, phone number up on the screen, and while we do it, uh, I'm going to answer some of last week's mail. Now we have a new feature on the show. We have an email address for people who Ooh, uh, either uh, don't, you know, can't get in on the phone lines. We never get to everybody. Uh, or you know, some people are just too shy to call no phone me. Phone number here. yet? Uh, well, Steve. Hello. Phone number, please. All right. Phone number. Well, he's somewhere. Okay. Okay. All right. So anyway, while we're doing that, I'm going to do some of uh, last week's mail. Uh, first one is from there, uh, there we go, a fellow named David Thornberry who writes. Okay. Hey guys, quickly, so you'll consider what I'm saying. I'm not a Christian, and I have no use for organized religion or the biblical God. Okay. It's a very capital. Okay. That's fine. That said, Martin, he goes on to say, your definition of evidence is far too Western and empirical. <laughs> <laughs> says, you, you are looking like a small thinking American with no imagination. Uh-oh. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. Whoa. Hang on. I've, I've, I've got to come There's more. Right. I've got to come back to this guy. Yeah. And then he goes, then he goes on to say, and uh, th- there was no evidence in Western science that the earth revolved around the sun either, but guess what? Now, okay, first of all, now, what first an idiot. Hang on. out of it. <laughs> okay. Well, first off, okay, I don't know what you're talking about, about um, uh, the, uh, the, the, whole, uh, the whole thing about uh, my definition of evidence being far too Western and empirical. Because you don't have da- imagination. Yeah. Look, David, well, well, first off, David, uh, science is an empirical process. 
Science is is all about. That's all it is. It's not about imagination. Yeah, it's about. <laughs> if, if you're saying yeah. if you're saying Martin's de- uh, definition of evidence is wrong because he's not showing enough in imagination, you don't understand what evidence is about, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and science is an empirical process. It's all about reaching conclusions about the natural world through empirical methods like observation and experimentation. That's what it does. Yeah. Uh, and as far as like you have an old well, you know, skeptical people <laughs> are quite used to being called close-minded and having no imagination. Mm-hmm. By generally by people who are dis- dismayed at the fact that we are not as willing as they are to just accept whatever fanciful notion that they like as uncritically as they have. Yeah. You know, so that's just sour grapes there. And besides However, the fact that there's no evidence for the sun for the earth going around the sun, there was plenty of evidence. Yeah. We just hadn't found it. Well, yet. he's dead wrong. Nobody it's, had well, looked no, up in the sky wrong. and noticed yeah. how the planets he's, but, moved. But he's just like dead wrong. He's just wrong. Claim is dead wrong. Yeah, the yeah. first the first, the heliocentric model actually came first. Again, Aristarchus, <laughs> who was a Greek, uh, developed the first heliocentric model in about 200 BCE. Now, he was shot down by Aristotle. Uh, who uh, gave a bunch of philosophical objections to the heliocentric <laughs> model that okay. today sounds stupid. Because Aristotle just then, could not imagine yeah. that the Earth actually went around the sun. And yeah. so yeah. he was more influential, and he got people to believe <laughs> the wrong thing yeah. by making these emotional appeals. But back then, back then it's understandable because the science was not developed enough yet. So Aristotle's objections back then made sense to the people back then yeah. because they didn't understand... The process as well. If the Earth is but, zooming around the sun, why what, aren't things moving around? That's where, exactly where that was exactly Earth his objection. How can we possibly Aristotle stand basically on a solid said, Earth if it's moving around? Aristotle said, you know, if if the Earth is spinning yeah. around, how how why aren't the birds in the sky being wafted away exactly. into the? That yeah. was actually he his didn't objection. Have enough imagination, dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he did not have enough imagination to embrace the factual, yeah, <laughs> yeah. empirical, yeah, uh, model. But anyway, uh, what Copernicus discovered later on when he revived the. Um, the heliocentric model was that the heliocentric model was able to better explain observable phenomena. Yeah. That see, because uh, uh, astronomers were seeing things in their observations of the planets that weren't making sense based on the model that the Earth was the center of everything. Specifically, there was the varying brightness of the planets. Some planets appeared to get brighter and then dimmer, yeah. and they could they couldn't figure that out. And also, there's the apparent retrograde motion of some of the planets. Yeah. Some astronomers were looking at some of the planets up in the sky, and they were doing this. And then it would appear to do one of these, and then it would do that. And they couldn't figure it out. But the heliocentric model explained that apparent retrograde motion. And subsequent science, especially when Newton came along and invented physics for us, um, (laughs) it it ended up supporting the heliocentric model. And that's where we have it today. So, David, before you make... um, you know, assertions about what it is that science uh, does or does not have evidence for. Do your homework, all right? Yeah, can I, can I just... Uh, oh, go ahead. Right for a moment yeah. here. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it really annoys me, uh, this constant insult we get from uh, supernaturalists that we lack imagination. We don't lack imagination, dude. We lack willingness to believe stuff without evidence. Mm-hmm. Now, that aside... I'd be willing to put my evidence up against, what was this guy's name, David? David. I'd be willing to uh, to g- get into an imagination contest with David <laughs> any day of the week. Yeah. I have, I have been, worked as a professional artist. Yeah. I drew comic books for a living. I design games now. Mm. I read science fiction and fantasy bo- books containing concepts more imaginative than most of what David probably can deal with uh, on a day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. The only difference is... I don't believe them. I yeah. enjoy them, which yeah. is, you know, completely healthy. And that's the thing about, you know, when uh, when supernaturals, uh, you know, respond to skeptics by saying, oh, you guys are just closed-minded if you don't want to, you know. No, it's not that. It's just we don't waste our time with uh, explanations of things that aren't true, that yeah. can't be backed up. Right. You okay. made the mistake, dude. You started okay. believing it before it was proved. Now, one more letter. That's and your problem, not ours. One more letter, and this one's more interesting, uh, and then we'll go ahead and go to callers. Uh, but this is from uh, Steve Rogers, and he says, uh, he brings up the cloning issue. Uh-huh. And he says, we're talking nowadays about things not addressed by the Bible or other ancient texts. Uh, recent news stories about the supposed cloning of human beings have been revealing about how people judge something to be right or wrong. Several prominent people have come out vehemently declaring human cloning to be evil or criminal, et cetera, et cetera. And then he goes on to mention that um, you know, cloning itself was not, since it didn't exist 2,000 years ago and there's no concept of it, It wasn't mentioned specifically in the Bible. So he says, I'd like to hear how people have arrived at any opinions they may have about the morality of human cloning. Does the Bible or other religious text address human cloning in any specific way? 
uh, I would ask people who are sure human cloning is evil or good, where they get their assurance that it is evil or good. Are they judging it for themselves based upon principles, or are they somehow finding an absolute opinion where I can't see one? Is this a topic where heavy interpretation by the reader of the Bible must come into play because there's no literal answer? What do the folks who claim the Bible has literal answers say about this? Is judge, in judging the possibility of human, human cloning to be good or bad, how does an atheist met method of arrival at his or her moral judgment differ from that of a religious person's? Well, that's an interesting uh, question, Steve. So uh, now you're the big uh, uh, life extension uh, biotechnology guy. Do you want to start? Do you want to answer respond? Yeah, to this? the answer and, is it's neither either evil nor good. It is a te it is a potential yeah. thing we could do, right? Yeah. And the, whether the you know goodness or badness, uh, ethically speaking. Uh, depends on what you use it for. What you'll find, in my experience, when you uh, when you hear the opinions of people who declare cloning to be bad, is a stream of hypothetical scenarios based on uh, their hypothetical worst case scenarios. Right? Mm -hmm. Why I might open my door and walk down the street, and everybody I look at looks like Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Big, right. Well, <laughs> Osama bin Laden cloning an army of himself. And invading America. Apart from the fact Hitler was ugly, uh -huh. <laughs> there's a lot more to somebody's personality than just their genetics. Uh -huh. So it's that even if we had a Hitler to mm -hmm. clone or yeah. live uh, genetic material from Hitler to clone from, which I don't think we got, no. um, <laughs> even if we had that and you made a bunch of guys that look like Hitler... They it wouldn't necessarily mean they're all be, Hitler. be Hitler. Yeah. They, I mean, Hitler had a particular upbringing at a particular era in time. He had particular friends. He had particular discussions, and mm. he and you know he reached particular conclusions. I mean, there's yeah. that. It's ridiculous to think that just because you cloned a bad person, that the clone would be just as bad. Yeah. Plus, where's this idea that only bad people would clone themselves a million times? I could open up my door and see a million Gandhis. You know, if that was yeah. the if that was the premise, mm. and Gandhi was supposed to, or Mother Teresa's for those of you who think that she was a nice lady. Yeah, no, um, there's some dispute about that. <laughs> but, you know, there's nothing there's nothing yeah. to assume yeah. that it's the bad people that are going to get a hold of this. So yeah. and and you know, ethical issues in things like life extension and biotechnology and medicine and what have you do tend to first be brought up by the people who have objections to them, and those objections more often than not don't necessarily have anything to do have any sort of basis in science. They're all these uh, moral and uh, philosophical sections yeah, my, rooted my, in, I think, a person's religious predispositions. My advice when you uh, when you encounter uh, the opinion of somebody who is a self-styled bioethicist, mm -hmm. my opinion is run the other way. Bioethicists <laughs> in general, I'm sure there are nice ones out there that I don't yeah. know about, but in general, from my experience, bioethicists are people who are in the, in the business of making money, lecturing, uh, to, uh, giving lectures for the purpose of frightening people, mm -hmm. right? It's, wow. there's, listening to a bioethicist is no different from going out and seeing, mm -hmm. you know, um, Terminator 2. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunch of fiction that is yeah. scary to, and, and enjoyable because it's scary, and that's why you're paying your money. Yeah. The bioethicists are, are, have... I have yet to hear one who has anything to offer other than a bunch of made-up, worst-case hypothetical scenarios. And you mentioned movie. It's amazing to me how quite often popular culture informs these objections to uh, biotechnology. Yeah. I have heard people, the example you just mentioned, all the people saying, oh, we'll get an army of Hitlers. So people have seen too much boys, boys from Brazil too many times. <laughs> uh, I've had people argue against cloning based upon the fact that they saw this horrible movie, The Sixth Day. You know, which, uh, right. you know, which you uh, said you kind of liked for some reason. And, and right? Because at the end of the sixth, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. At the end of the sixth day, Arnold Schwarzenegger finds out that he himself is the clown. Yeah. And yeah. not the original. Yeah. And he's the hero, right? He has right. to deal now with the fact that he's got an awkward place in society, which he deals with by going off and making a life of his own. Uh -huh. Nothing wrong with that. I thought that was just well, fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But still, it didn't prevent the filmmakers through the whole running time of the movie demonizing cloning as a science. They did, but yeah. then how do you explain that Arnold Schwarzenegger was the hero? Because he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's got to be, <laughs> no, 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 he's no, got no, to be no, the no, hero. No, no he should have realized, oh, I'm a clone, therefore I have no moral compunction about anything, <laughs> then I kill everyone. Oh. And he didn't do that. Well, well, he's already he already did the Terminator, and I think there may have been copyright <laughs> issues there, but uh, yeah. 
Uh, but who knows? It might have been a you know a, a more uh, well, no, it's just a stupid <laughs> movie all the way around. No, no I'm not calling it a great film. I yeah. am saying the fi- in the final analysis in the in the, in the, the Daniel Ma, out yeah. is okay. Yeah, uh, in that according to that film. Yeah. Well, it's the internet. Uh, okay. Well, that's it then. Uh, fine. Uh, so that's emails. And at the end of the show, <laughs> we'll, uh, week. well, again, you know, we'll give out that email address, all kinds of fun. Uh, every week, we'll pick like the two most interesting letters and read them out on the air. And it's cold uh, here, dudes. it is. It has been cold the last uh, few times. So we'll just well, I expect it to be warm. This time have it's to deal warm with outside. It. Yeah, I know. It's it's, they've just you know, it flip flops. Wow. Okay. Uh, phone number to call us live four seven seven two two eight eight. And we'll start with Steve on line one. See what you have to say. Hey, you're on the air. How you doing? Hi guys. Uh, I did, in fact, see a uh, T-shirt there. I want to get a copy of it. Says, uh, <clears throat> "I don't think much, therefore I might not be." I, okay. One of your guys was wearing that once. I thought that was very funny. Okay, I don't. Remember. I don't think I have that shirt. Ashley, is that one of yours? No, might I have don't. Been, anyway. Okay. Well, there's all sorts of locations on the web, so you can just search around. I guess. First of all, I'd like to say that I don't uh, believe 99% of what the world's religions try to sell us in terms of miracles, supernatural happenings, historical myths, or the like. Uh-huh. Um, in fact, some of that may be oh. true, but uh, what, and you guys may have addressed this in an earlier um, show, but let me just give you my, my principal point of view. Do you believe that something as complex as the human being or the plant and animal life surrounding us evolved by a series of freak explosions and random happenings? And, uh, <laughs> you believe, it's a lot more complicated than that. Wait, wait a minute. Do you believe... Yeah. That an explosion in a print shop could produce Webster's unabridged oh dictionary. Yeah, we have heard this Not one, exactly. as a matter of fact. Okay, yeah. so I haven't heard your response um, to that, but it seems to me that I would I would offer to you that mm-hmm. that a some type of creative intelligence, force, or energy that underlies the existence of order that we see around us must exist, or probably does exist. And uh, that's because I think it takes intelligence to create intelligence. For, for instance, I could not uh, create a cabinet unless I was intelligent enough to make a cabinet. An elephant or a gorilla could not make a cabinet. So what we see around us and the experience that we have is that intelligence comes from intelligence. So ergo, extrapolating backwards, there has to be some type of intelligence to result in the complexity of what we see around. Us. Okay, and then you're you're stopping at that intelligence. I mean, what created the intelligence that created our intelligence, and what created the intelligence that created the intelligence that created the intelligence that created our intelligence, and back and back and back. You just end up with a problem of infinite regression. Well, yes, that's that's right. You you uh, it is fallacious to believe that everything is explainable, and there is an mm-hmm. infinite universe, and we are finite human beings, so we cannot explain it. However, well, uh, but that doesn't mean I that. that. Well, that doesn't mean oh, that. Please. Yeah, I mean, if you're taking the uh, the attitude, oh well, but it's just so far beyond us, we can't explain it. So let's not even try and just accept it as a premise. Yeah, that's kind of defeatist yeah, that, attitude. Well, it, well, that's just not how you know science goes about determining answers to things. But anyway, well, you, Jeff, you, you wanted to go you, ahead and you, you wanted know, to start. Uh, you cannot uh, even. We can't re- really explain photosynthesis or, or how light behaves, for instance. So not uh, everyone is explaining. Exa- we've got pretty good ideas on how right. Okay, yeah. caller. Yeah. What was this? What's, your, what's the caller's name? Steve. Steve. Yeah. Steve, um, I will answer I'll answer your, que- your question, a right. question of my own. Do you believe that a, uh, what was it, a tornado moving through a junkyard or an explosion or from in, in a print shop, that, that those things are good analogies for what scientists mean when they talk about the Big Bang or evolution? You believe those are good analogies? Uh, no, evolution is actually. Uh, I, I believe that evolution is a, a proven process. So, what is I your mean, point? Uh, yeah. Well, the, the proven process. I mean, evolution started somewhere, and the, the I mean the force that created the order we see. All right, fine, us. fine, fine. Let's right. t- Big Bang. Okay. All right. Uh, do you think an, ex- an explosion in a print shop or a uh, tornado moving through a junkyard, that those are good analogies for what scientists mean when they talk about the Big Bang? Not initially, no. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> then right. why did you waste our time with a bad analogy? <laughs> why did you ask us if we believed that your bad analogy that has little or nothing to do with what scientists mean when they talk about these things, why don't right, you let, ask us if we no, believe I, that? Okay, let, let me. Uh, that's let, that's let me pointless my, and a waste of time. I do. I do think it's an appropriate analogy because if there had been a Big Bang and we would have had a bunch of stuff floating out there, 
Uh, do you really believe that that would have resulted in the plant and animal life we see around us? Okay. It's, well, you, you mm -hmm. believe that an explosion at a print shop or a tornado moving through a junkyard is a good analogy for what scientists mean when they talk about the Big Bang? Yes. Okay. You are wrong. My response to you is learn what scientists are actually talking about before you come to us with stupid questions. The way that, the way that we got here, yes, it's a very, very complicated subject, but it's not just random chemicals and molecules just bumping into each other and all of a sudden, you know, poof, a man walks out of a pond. Um, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that, and also it's not completely random. Chemistry is a topic of science. Yeah. If you put certain chemicals together, they'll bond in certain ways. Other chemicals just plain won't. If you put certain chemicals together, you'll get constant chain reactions where they build on each other. So That's you, proven science. So you, you, you guys, uh, you, you answer my question. And, and there you are think physics. An explosion in a print shop could produce Webster's Unabridged Dictionary? That's no, a, moron, but why are you asking us that? That because, has nothing to do bang, with the Big Bang. Because the Big why Bang. Why are you wasting our time with this question that has nothing to do with what, with what scientists mean by the Big Bang? It's a complete your, and utter waste tone, of time. Jeff, but huh? here's the point. If you believe that, that if you don't believe there was a creative intelligence under underlying the Big Bang to where we are right now, yeah, then you should. I do. I think. It is. <laughs> on so what basis? Are you, are you why? Saying? Why should on, on I? What, on what not are because, you saying? Not because of your of your explosion in a print shop analogy, because that's a bad analogy that has nothing to do with what scientists mean when they talk about the Big Bang. Why should I believe there's a creative intelligence other than that? Well, you do, and you think that I should. No, I'm, I'm saying that Why? what we see around us... But uh, what, what is it that we see around us that makes a creative intelligence necessary? Other, see, than, you, other than you can't see how it would work out any other way. We see order. But this order, order can be explained yeah. through physics and chemistry and biology and, yeah. and several other sciences, which, which we have very well documented. I would argue to you that, that uh, the order we see around us cannot be explained by the physical laws that we see... Uh, and, and you well, would be wrong. Well, and, and you know that how? And apparently, how do you know this? Apparently, you haven't. Who told you this? You haven't read through the sciences enough to understand how chemistry works and how chemistry does work in, let's say, photosynthesis or whatever. It's a very chemical process. It's not really all that complicated. Yeah. On how you know photosynthesis, for instance, works. It's relatively simple. It's chemistry. And Jack, and Steve, I can I can I can uh, respond to your argument by saying that uh, it is indeed possible to have order without design. You know, I can argue that it's very possible for there to be order without design because in order for, because in order for anything to exist at all, it must exist in an ordered form. Order is entailed by the nature of existence itself. If if something's going to exist at all, you have to exist as a thing. If you do, if you're not a thing, if you're not an ordered object of some sort, you're just loose molecules floating around. Okay, and we right. and again and and again, chemistry explains to us how certain molecules of one sort are attracted to certain molecules of another sort, and they and and, th and, and gravity and chemical processes and exactly. and, yeah. and all these natural forces cause those the existing matter to interact, to to combine, to congregate, to uh, you know build up into chunks, to interact with other chunks of things. I mean, the, there are natural processes that drive all this stuff. And you're you're suggesting that just because we you don't understand just because it, you don't understand it, we should believe that there's a god. Well, sorry, dude. Well, you I, need I, I to you need to understand natural law, then come back to us, what do you or or that? give us some evidence that there actually is a god, rather than just your ignorance as a reason why we should believe that there is. Well, I, I would offer to you that the creative intelligence. That, uh, Which you haven't that established. We, what we don't, creative intelligence? We don't know what this creative intelligence is. We don't know how it works. I mean, see, if you're going to propose a creative intelligence, you need to be prepared to answer a slew of questions. What is it? How does it operate? What are the mechanisms by which this creative intelligence takes matter and puts it into forms that uh, turn into things, that look ordered to us? You know, all you're doing at this point is you have this thing that you perceive to be a great mystery, which is why is there a universe? Why is there stuff in it? And you're introducing a new mystery to explain the mystery. 
And so you've got an explanation, but you still haven't got an explanation that provides any knowledge. How does, the, or how does this creative intelligence work? What does it think? How does it do things? Why does, creative, why does this creative intelligence organize molecules and matter in a certain way as opposed to other ways? Well, he's already... Why does it do the things it does, and how does it do the things it does? Steve has already all... written off our ability to answer any of, the, any of those questions with his, with his little comment about, you know... Well, there, there's a limit to human intelligence. Yes, there is. There is a limit to human, intelli- human intelligence. We can only understand so much, or we only do understand so much. I'm, I'm not quite willing to say that yeah, there's an absolute I mean, I, limit, I don't but certainly, that either. certainly we are less than omniscient. Yeah. However, that is, is not, never has been, and can't be a justification for just making stuff up. What we do understand is that there are natural processes that, that, that those processes act on physical matter in ways we have observed, in ways that are predictable, that are not driven by any supernatural forces that we've ever found anywhere, and that there are darn good explanations for how the natural playing out of those natural forces could lead to the situation we see today. If you don't want to accept that, that's fine, but you can't very well blurt out your refusal to accept the uh, the process of natural law as justification for why we should believe as you do. Uh, I I didn't say that you should believe as I do. I just uh, I, you, you did I you did you, in I, fact say I that, I, that a, we uh, should believe that there no. was a creative intelligence. And yeah. You, you clearly gave, you said gave that. a good explanation of your point of view, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to have to go think about it because um, uh, it was a good good answer, guys. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Take Thanks. care, Steve. Thanks for the call. All right. I've been bottling it up, haven't I? <laughs> I'm well, sorry. You, I apologize to Steve. I <laughs> yeah. went off on Steve for, for more than more than I should. Yeah. Well, but you know. really, but really, but you know, again, if it's... he's going to come at us with a question like that, he has to at least be willing to stand behind it as a yeah. as as a, as if it was a good analogy. It, when he first, when he didn't want to, mm-hmm. then the question was pointless, and then when he did want to say that a explosion at a print shop is a good analogy mm-hmm. for the Big Bang, mm-hmm. then the entire question breaks down because it shows that he has no idea what he's talking about when it comes to the science well, he's like, criticizing. Well, it's just like David, uh, our letter writer here. You know, you need to you need to study these fields yeah. before you make pronouncements on what it is that science and, does or does not know, have answers for. But, but, then that, but that's pretty daunting for a lot of people. Well, you don't even have to study the field. The well, one thing you need to understand is what science is and how it works. Yeah, yeah. Then, you know, a certain amount of he- healthy skepticism when a when uh, new scientific theories come up is is a good thing. That's appropriate. Yeah. But yeah, when a lot process. of scientists have studied a a a uh, have studied a particular subject or a theory's been proposed and it's been tested and tested and tested and it always seems to work out, mm-hmm. those are times when it is silly to just reject it mm-hmm. and remain skeptical. And I have to remember another thing, too. The reason why people are so attracted to this idea that there has to be creative intelligences behind things also has to do with a lot of the explanation that Steve was giving us. It's that we as people create stuff, and right. so that's how we just that's just how we think about things in general. We're pattern-recognizing and pattern-seeking yeah. creatures. And so that's how we identify with things. Yeah, we yeah. know that human, oh, sure. human beings make artificial stuff that we see before us, so... They just you we're, uh, we're sort of becoming. God must have made it's an anthropocentric point of view, uh, you know, applying right. but, how we know how things are done make, to we nature. Make, we make food, or we, we grow food, right? Yeah, which is useful and to we us. We make food to the extent we can mix the chemicals together to get something yeah. <laughs> that's like a twinkie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so clothing, food in quotation marks. Clothing, which yeah. is fe- essentially a tool to keep ourselves protected from the elements. Sure. Yeah. Shelter, which is a tool to keep ourselves protected from the elements, mm-hmm. and then tools, which is things we use to help us make the other things. Yeah. Right. We make vehicles, which are tools. Right. The things we make, except for art. Mm-hmm. Right, and art is uh, generally for some purpose. Right, it's either our to pleasure, if nothing else. Yeah, it's for entertainment, or it's for for you know to depict a certain thing that already exists. None of that is a good analogy for why the hell some cosmic entity would have created this universe. Yeah. What is the purpose of a tree? Is it a vehicle for God? Is it clothing for God? Is it a tool for God? Is it art by God? Yeah. None of that makes any sense if you want to use the analogy of people make things. Yeah, yeah, people make things for specific purpose. Right. What is the point of, uh, you know, how many, however many species of beetle it is yeah. that right. exists in the world? Yeah, thousands you know. of species of beetle. Bacteria. Uh, thousands of, you know. Blah. I, I've, I've had that argument over email with a, with a creationist before. It's like, okay, then explain to me 
uh, God's how flesh eating bacteria uh, yeah. uh, work in, within God's great plan. And well, she that said, could be a tool of God." Well, she said, "Well, some <laughs> see, well, God really wants some flesh. Consumed. Lots of uh, you know, lots of bacteria good for us. I mean, bacteria helps <laughs> digest our food, and it does this. I'm like, okay, fine for the good bacteria. Now explain to me disease causing bacteria. Satan." <laughs> did I guess it? Uh, you probably did, yeah. Oh, so then Satan's more powerful than God. Oh, boy. God lets go. Satan create and stuff. And around, around and around we yeah. go. So again, you know, when you resort to supernatural authority to, to explain stuff in the natural world, what the, what the believers in that don't understand is that they then now have to come up with an explanation for the supernatural stuff. Yeah. And simply saying, oh, well, that's just beyond our intelligence and that's beyond our ability to detect with our meager human intellects doesn't work. That's just a dodge. That's just dodging the issue. Yeah. It's not answering anything. You've just created this all-purpose answer that magically has all the properties you want it to have to solve the mystery that you think needs to be solved, and, and you and want to stop it the there. way you want to solve it. Yeah, solve it the way you want to solve it, and then you stop there. Yeah. And, and, and people who are the anti-science crowd doesn't understand that that's not yeah. how science answers questions. We understand science. We let science answer the questions, even if okay. we don't understand it 100%. Well, we've chased one caller off, but we still have Kevin on line three, so let's see what he has to say. Hey, you're on the air. How you doing? Hello. Hi. Uh, just want to say you're putting on a great show today. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I just had a few questions about maybe like morality uh -huh. and uh -huh. within an atheist philosophy. Uh -huh. um, let's just say you, you don't believe in anything that you can't prove. Is that correct? Well, you have, you have to understand. That's, standard, no, that's really not exactly true. It's okay. a, that's a misunderstanding. That's a okay. simplification okay. of it. Can I, can I respond to that? Uh, well, yeah, let, let's let him get us a right. question well, out. Right. What's, your, what's your point? Sorry. Yeah. Um, well, I was just curious. Um, if, you're, if you don't believe in something that you can't prove, um, do you, do you, when you see somebody being, being hurt by somebody else, do you, do you believe that person feels, actually feels the pain like you would feel pain? Okay, I'm going to start with this one and then yeah. go go around the table. Okay, first off, uh, yeah, um, the, the concept. Yeah, I'm familiar with the concept of empathy, and I like to think I have it. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that is uh, my non-supernatural basis for uh, laws of, of morality and ethics, which is that actions have consequences. Okay. And I understand the consequences because if an action will have a say a harmful consequence to me. Uh, and it will, or, and uh, I'm sorry, an action that will have a harmful consequence to another person, I understand that it would have the same consequence if I were on the receiving end of that action. Okay. And so I understand that somebody else being hurt, that would feel the same way to me if I were there. If I were one of the people in those, uh, you know, Twin Towers on September 11th, you know, I would have been killed just like they were. Mm -hmm. And so the understanding that actions have consequences is a perfectly rational basis for judging what is what we can consider moral or immoral, in that it's actions that are beneficial to people and that are helpful to people, that are good to people, we can call those the good ones. Because it is human beings, it is advantageous to us to cooperate with one another. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. And you have to and if you want to look at it from that perspective to say what is the advantage of just going out and being chaotic and destructive for no reason? There really isn't any. There's, there's really no great advantage to doing that because what happens? You'll either become a pariah in society, you'll be, you'll be judged, you'll be put in prison, you'll be incarcerated, and you'll be kept apart from society, or you'll be, um, you'll be dead like the September 11th hijackers. Mm -hmm. So there's really no great advantage. The only time you tend to get people thinking there is an advantage is when you have some sort of a crazy supernatural belief system and you have authority figures enforcing that supernatural belief system saying, hey, follower... Uh, if you get in this airplane and hijack it and take it over and crash it into this building, there's this wonderful magical paradise that you'll be transported to where you'll have virgins peeling you grapes for eternity. That's okay. how you tend to get people to, into ignoring their empathic, uh, you know, what I think is, it can come to people very naturally unless they're bred a different way, unless they're just raised with different ideas about stuff. That's how you get people to get away from being empathetic towards others. I'm glad we see eye to eye on something, man. Okay. Who's, who's um, but I just wanted to, I mean, can you imagine just, just for the sake of, um, just for the sake of, uh, just discussion, um, um, a purely existential place where only your thoughts exist. Well, like the Matrix? Just, just sort of. for the sake of thought. Right. Um, okay. Um, I'm think, a brain in a jar then. If, you think something bad about somebody else, then bad things happen to them. And if somebody thinks bad things about you, 
then bad things happen to you. Um, in, if there wasn't any physical reality, then if there was any conflict at all, then there would be infinite pain and suffering for the people in the conflict. All right, well, so thank goodness reality is um, like that. And there would be an intensity for, for, some, for there to be some sort of some sort of buffer between you two. Okay, well, Jeff's next, <laughs> right, and then right. Ash's turn. Yeah, uh, to get, get back to your original question, there are a small number of things which I believe, though I can't prove them. And it, it pisses me off. Because I would much <laughs> rather have, yeah, yeah. I would much rather have a darn good provable <laughs> reason to believe these things than simply have no choice but accepting that they're true. Because otherwise, um, I couldn't accomplish anything. One is uh, uh, the, this example you just gave. Um, it sounds similar to uh, the idea of solipsism, which is that nothing. It's the idea that nothing exists except your own mind, that the entire universe is an illusion, that the people you meet are all, you've made them all mm -hmm. up, right? That, and that mm -hmm. uh, nothing really means anything. Well, I reject solipsism. Not because I can prove it's not true, okay? I cannot prove to myself that anything outside of me really exists mm -hmm. in that ultimate kind of sense. But I can't see where assuming solipsism would get me, right? I, I am presented with what appears to be a physical reality that I'm in and people that I have to deal with and, uh, and natural laws that operate certain ways. And I, it may be that it's all an illusion, but I'm not going to believe that because if I do, I don't know what to do next. Right? Yes. If, yes. I, if I accept that what appears to be true is true, fine, I can now make some decisions about what I'm going to do. Now, so there's a small number of things like that, which I do accept. I, I, I'm willing to say that I believe those things, even though I can't prove them, for purely practical reasons. Now, getting to your example of the uh, the the place where there's only minds that think that only think thoughts. think uh, there's only thoughts. Um, can I just play with that concept for a second? I'm yeah. not sure that yeah. your assumption that as soon as one person did something that made uh, did as soon as one mind thought badly about some other mind that you'd get in infinite suffering because the other mind, mind might get it and say, whoa, dude, <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah. think bad things about me, then you know that may drive me to think bad things about you, and I don't want to do that because check it out. We might get the spiraling cycle of hostility. Yeah, yeah. Right? So that wouldn't have to be like that. Yeah, you could still, they could, I don't could think the universe is anything like that, but, yeah. but uh, I think your assumption that it would inevitably yeah. lead to Infinite suffering. Infinite suffering is wrong. Yeah, because these minds could, by the same practice... Decide to cooperate. Yeah, decide to you know, realize the consequences of act, the, the action of thinking bad stuff about other minds and say, okay, let's develop this system of ethics that says, don't think bad thoughts about other... You know, ape exactly. shall not kill ape. You know, that kind I will, of thing. I would, <laughs> you know? I would do my absolute right. best yeah. to think good about everybody because then I'll have it coming back to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then do you understand the philosophy of Christianity? Is that the philosophy of Christianity? No, think? Christianity I think is so. Christianity uh, is basically no, no, uh, a try and be good and believe in Christ so that you get a big prize at the end. Yeah, no, I mean I it's not so. about. That's, it's I don't not think about, so. Well, yeah, because well, if, I don't if, think so. If you run around killing everybody, as long as just before I die, I say, "My God, I'm wrong," you know, Jesus, yeah. please I don't save think me. So. Then you go to heaven. I don't think so. You get your prize. Okay, what, how do you, how do you so. think? Where, where, and where do you get your evidence that Christianity yeah. is something other than that? Yeah, how do what? what we've we've seen seen describe the book this, is all based. You know, describe to us what you think the basis of Christian morality is. The message. Of Jesus Christ, he mm -hmm. came to the earth, uh -huh. and he was humbled throughout his life. He carried a cross, and okay, he was crucified. Okay, but get, to, get, us, get us to the so basis the of Christian morality. Way, um, okay, he's okay, God. So go back to yeah. the original idea of an existence where only thoughts exist. Well, no, and no, no. I want, I want to. Let's not. I don't want to get turn. This, let's not overcomplicate the thing. I'd like to know I'm specifically. Trying, well, I, give him, give him a shot. I'm You're, just okay. trying to talk to you. Give uh, you my logical argument. I, I understand okay. that. I'm and just... I'll let you talk. No, okay. But... Um, <laughs> well, it is his let's, job. Let's talk. Yeah. <laughs> but go ahead. You go talk. Ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Just... Go ahead. Okay. And if you go back to the original example of mm -hmm. conflict causing infinite pain and suffering, and then mm -hmm. if you take the example of Jesus and you put that in there, and that stops, that stops the pain. It stops from. It stops it from getting worse. Mm -hmm. Then do you understand? No, because, what, what, because okay. where, where, why should we take that 
a hypothetical universe of just minds that you gave us seriously. I mean, the universe is nothing like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because, so, so, one, so why would you, why would the Jesus character make any sense if you need to have him in the context of this universe of just minds being a- angry with each you, other? Do you deny I don't your own it. existence? I, I don't. I, but I'm not just a mind. Yeah. What I are mean, you talking about? You have a physical body too. Yeah. Yeah. And? So and what are you talking about, dude? Yeah. It's um, necessary to have to have both. Or else... Well, it's necess- uh, uh, actually, it's not necessary to have a mind. This doesn't have a mind, and it exists. Well, what are you would, talking uh, about? would you experience anything if you were a glass? I don't know. Is it necessary for me to experience things? I do, but is it necessary in some cosmic sense? Okay. Well, it's, yeah. if, if I it's mean, necessary, if you want it to be necessary... Huh? Yeah, I say, I don't, say, I'm not the author of <laughs> deciding what's necessary yeah, or not. I'm we're asking just, you. We're trying to we're trying to get to the bottom of how it is that you think about this stuff. Yeah, you're, okay. you, you postulate. And, and I'm not. Oh, and we're sorry. just not understanding what you, you're, you're trying to make connections, and I'm not quite sure. Let me okay. just ask. Let me just ask you specifically. Okay, do you think that uh, if morals? What, what, okay, let's say that morals come from a divine authority figure. Let's say that morals are just uh, a set of precepts given to us by a god. Mm-hmm. Okay, then I'm not sure that's what he thinks. Oh, well, let's just. Uh, okay. But but he's asking us to to run with the yeah, talk about the Christian bizarre hypotheticals. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, well, he's asking us to uh, kind of to see it through the you okay. know, a Christian sense yeah. of morality. Yeah. How would that ultimately necessarily be based on? What would that be based on? Okay, morals coming from a god. It seems to me that you would okay. have have to have, it would either be one of two things. You would simply have pure authoritarianism, where God just makes up a bunch of rules and says, follow these rules because I'm God. Or, you would have God still having to base his moral precepts on actual stuff that goes on. Like, okay, if you do this, smack, okay, <laughs> that hurts, so don't do that. Yeah, that sort exactly. of thing. So, but, it, but we can see that ourselves. Yeah. We have the ability to perceive actual things that go on in the world and understand what the consequences of action are, actions are. So then why does this divine authority handing us morals become even necessary when, with a we little trial and error, we ourselves. can get around to it as well? well yeah. you know, what we, do we need Jesus I don't know, the for? Whole, the whole message of a divine authority is that even if there is no, if there's total anarchy, just hypothetically speaking, mm-hmm. there's total anarchy. Then people will have at least something that they can that they can accept and say this is wrong and this is right. Oh yeah, but if you have total anarchy, that is the first thing people would start doing, right? That mm-hmm. yeah. okay, you got people running around just doing random things, right? And at some point, one of them is going to come into conflict with another one, and they're going to have an issue to resolve, and they're going to say, mm, okay, I tell you what, you can have half the jar of planter's peanuts that I was going to eat all myself, right? And then we're both satisfied. Mm-hmm. And at that point, no god was necessary to tell them, well, they could either fight to the death over the peanuts, or they could share the peanuts, right? Well, it was, there was no god was necessary. All, that all the... Uh, r- Useful rules of behavior come from people actually interacting and figuring out how to get along. Gods have nothing to do with it. Okay, you can think if, what you want. Well, I mean, if you can show me how it takes yeah. a god to yeah. make it so that... If you take, can tell me, uh, show me how it takes a god to make it so that sharing the peanuts is better than one killing the other over them, well, then go ahead. If if, you, but I don't if think if it you can. Don't feel any pain if you don't... If but you that's but again but you're, you're asking, pain, pain, you're asking about hypothetical situations would, that don't that that aren't based on reality and that's we do feel pain. and that's a useless then, process. Okay. Again, I mean you can say, I'm, well, what if we what if nobody felt pain and what if we were all brains in jars and what if there was nothing but mind? Yeah. What if and, look, what, what if there was? That's not the situation we're actually in. So it's really kind of pointless to just constantly go around saying, well, what if it was like this and what if it was like that? It's only useful when you can determine how processes work in the world that we actually have presented to us right now, the one we actually live in. Uh, let me pose you a hypothetical. Okay. Caller. Um, and this will be the last one we're going to go to the next and, you know, it'll, I'll make it just as um, bizarre to you as your hypothetical was to us, okay? Because okay. why not? Uh, <laughs> suppose there is no God. Suppose yeah. there is no higher authority to make the rules and, and impose them on us, okay? Mm-hmm. What are you going to do now? I'm just going to go on living my life. There you go. Exactly. Therefore, no God was required to give you the rules in the first place. You're going to go on living your life whether there's a God or not. So why 
why do you think there's any point to Im to invoking the uh, the idea of the existence of some divine lawgiver in the first place? Who cares? What difference does it make? I don't know. I mean, some people take the homeless guy on the corner. What does yeah. he have? He has nothing. If he if he can't believe in something, then yeah. But that's not that's in, just because that's it makes you happy doesn't mean that it's real though. Santa Claus made a lot of kids happy, and, but and I don't besides, believe in it. And besides, what's that homeless person going to do, right? You got a homeless person over here who believes in a god, homeless person over here who doesn't. Okay, now what happens? Well, maybe the homeless person over there is going to be happier. It's possible. What the heck? Uh, may, but maybe that homeless person is also going to waste a bunch of his time praying to some invisible friend who might not actually exist to get him out of his situation. And maybe the homeless person who doesn't believe in a god will actually make more of an effort to get himself out of the situation that he's in, and maybe he'll actually come out better. What's wrong with being happy? I mean, we only have so much... Well, there's nothing wrong with being happy, but if it's going to result in you remaining uh, uh, homeless on the street longer, then that yeah. actually could well, be bad. Yeah. It, Would you it depends be... what you're going to be happy about. If you're happy about something that's true, that's great. If you're happy about something that's not true, I think that that's not healthy. Yeah. And Would if you you're... rather be like a, bil a billionaire who is a slave to his money, works all day every day, and then dies in a car accident... Or be a homeless man would you, happy. Would you rather be someone who threw away their entire life believing in a god that may or may not exist? Yeah. And I'll I tell mean, you what's happy about it. What I did, what I would do, they wasted an entire life. Hey guys, just, okay, okay, we gotta go on. But uh, okay. again, again, all, right. all of these hypothetical <laughs> situations, I don't think they really apply. Personally, who knows? I might, uh, I might rather be a billionaire than a homeless guy because I think a billion dollars, uh, people who have a billion dollars, uh, don't seem terribly unhappy to me. I but could yeah, figure out how to use it. And enjoy yeah, it. sure. But that's yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, if I had a billion dollars, who knows? I might be a wonderful philanthropist. I might give all this money to these wonderful charities. Well, I might build museums for the city. And, you know, and, there's and, no. And I'll tell you, caller. As yeah. a matter of fact, my wife has been working very diligently, uh, spending our uh, her money and and I've contributed to this. Uh, attempting to help get a homeless person of our acquaintance off the street. We oh, do good. this in spite of the fact that we have no we have no reason at all to think no. that there's some guy in the sky who's going to judge us based on how we uh, treat yeah. other people. We're doing it because we think it's a good thing to do in general, yeah. just in, from the perspective of human beings getting along. It has nothing to do with a god. We don't need a god. Yeah. Doesn't matter to us, you know, who is supposed to have suffered on a cross thousands of years ago. We got no interest. That doesn't matter. What matters is getting along with other human beings. Yeah, and, and we're gonna we're gonna deal with that regardless. Yeah, and we appreciate so. your call, but we got we run out of time, so we're gonna go ahead and take a call. Ah! Okay. Right. Anyway. Wow. Boy. <laughs> Boy just... What was that? <laughs> I guess it was... was that the agony of a Christian losing his faith? <laughs> I guess it must have been, yeah. Again, it, 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 it's a person... Again, you can have a person who is desperately unhappy and who decides to accept this supernatural belief system in order to just fuel this happiness but not necessarily get out of the situation that made themselves unhappy in the first place. Right. It could be, for example, you can have someone who was abused by their spouse... You know, uh, retreating yeah. to the bathroom every night to cry, but thinking, oh, well, someday Jesus will help me. But they're not getting out of their situation. Yeah. All they're doing, it's a, it's a placebo effect. Yeah. And Why not just, you know, so I think that believing in things that aren't necessarily true and don't necessarily exist in order to just b cover up your unhappy state or the bad state that's damaging to you with a comforting, happy-making belief yeah. Is, you know, that's just, uh, that is, now you're entering the realm of self-delusion, it's just not good for anybody. But, still, uh, you can see morals and ethics, it's, it's entirely practical reasons for them. Uh, Samantha's on line one, we'll see what she has to say about the whole thing. Hey, thanks for holding, you're on the air. Um, hi, um, I have a question, I'm not really familiar with everything about atheism, but um, mm -hmm. from watching your show, um, it seems to me that um, most of the other Abrahamic religions, um, specifically Christianity, Judaism, um, and um, Islam, seem to have kind of a respect for other religions. But throughout this, all of this conversation, it doesn't. It seems like you just deny everything that um, every other religion has to offer, without thinking that maybe the people that um, that believe in these things don't necessarily feel that they're um, 
in a situation where they're believing in something that they don't know if is necessarily true because they sincerely believe that this is true. This is what um, has uh, been written or whatever. But um, so I'm, I'm just wondering, um, like, if there's a person that that sincerely believes in these things how do you it doesn't seem like there's a lot of respect for other religions and we could clarify about that okay yeah i'll be happy to it's it here's here's the uh the distinction that needs to be made is that um respecting people is one thing respecting belief belief systems is something entirely different now i generally speaking i don't have a problem with let's say, the rights of an individual to believe in something that they choose to believe in. And I understand that most uh, religious people hold on to their religious beliefs very sincerely. That to me, but that isn't a question. What I'm interested in, though, is establishing what really is true and what are facts. And um, a belief system that, my, and in my opinion, doesn't really stand up to the evidence, can't be demonstrated in a factual manner, uh, to me, it isn't really, it's not a matter of respect, it's just a matter of saying, look, facts are facts, and if this belief system uh, isn't supportable, then, uh, you know, I think then, it's, then it merits being criticized, and it has nothing to do with disrespecting a person or an individual uh, in, uh, and, and their right to believe in a thing sincerely that, uh, that they happen to have a sincere belief of. Can I respond that really quickly before whoever, if anyone else wants to uh, okay. respond? Um, but with all due respect, though, do, have you studied a little bit about um, uh, other religions such as Christianity and um, Islam and um, stuff like that? Well, I was I was raised Christian. I think most of us on on this panel were. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, um, but we have looked into other religions to a certain extent. Yeah. I, I admit that I am not as knowledgeable about Islam and Hinduism and no. other uh, you know world faiths as I am about the one I was raised in. But well, that's that's still. cool. That's cool. Um, but basically, um, to let me take a religion of Islam, and it, you say that you uh, have a set of facts that you believe in because. Um, you're not really into the whole, um, well, I believe this is true, but I don't really, I mean, I'm, I can't really prove it or whatever. Is that correct? Huh? Well, no. no. Uh, it, here, here's, here's the position. Um, we think and uh, that it is, it is the position of someone who is promoting a particular belief system uh -huh. to present us with the evidence to back up that belief system in order to validate belief in it. If someone says, I have a God, and uh, I think that you should believe in my God, because if you do, then that's your ticket to salvation. I'm going to say, okay, present me with the evidence for uh, this belief. And if they're not able to present me with anything that I consider compelling, I'm going to say, well, at this point, I choose not to believe you, sir. And that's sort of where I stand. Well, so do you re uh, re understand that um, in the Islamic religion, um, the, the Holy Book of the Quran is actually... Um, has never been changed such as the Bible may have been changed over time to suit maybe a uh, time period. So, yeah. so um, they say that um, the, the words that are written there are the exact same words that have been written since the beginning of uh, whenever well, uh, you the know, Quran had the, come about. You know so are, those are technically the facts. But, but hold those on. are the Hang evidence on. that shows. I'm Hang sorry, on. go ahead. Samantha? You, you are aware uh, there are many, many, many Christians who will claim the exact same thing about the Bible, right? Okay. Right? Uh -huh. So, I mean, we're, we are not religious scholars. We are, you know, and, and to us, questions, uh, even if a book has existed without translation errors or, or editing over thousands of years, I mean, that, okay, neat, so what? <laughs> um, to, I want to get back to your original question, okay? Uh -huh. Um, I don't know if you've been watching our show from the beginning today, but it opened up with a caller who immediately attacked us uh, for being unimaginative because we wouldn't believe the stuff he was willing to believe. And that's, you know, that's pretty annoying. And let's not forget that religions like Christianity go around telling, they go around telling each other every Sunday and, and us whenever they encounter us that we are going to burn in hell forever for not being in their club, okay? If you want to talk about respect for other people's beliefs, mm. I think we got to take into account that these religions you're uh, upset with us for not respecting st 
started off <laughs> by uh, by saying that they were completely cool with the idea that us three guys here who are not hurting anybody just for not joining their club deserve to suffer eternal torment. Okay? So religion is not this happy thing where, oh, it's just these wonderful beliefs that, that are different, that different people believe different things, and then that's all there is to it. No. At the same time they're being happy about their own beliefs, they are lashing out at folks like us all the time. Now, so, so you know, when it comes yeah. to respect, it's two-sided. Furthermore, I don't think you show respect for somebody by just saying, oh, how cute, isn't it neat the way he believes that thing for which there is no evidence whatsoever. You respect a person by taking their intellect seriously and asking them serious questions and expecting serious answers. And if you discover that they can't uh, justify the things that they believe, pointing it out to them is not a display of disrespect. It is a display of respect for them as human beings who deserve to believe things that are actually true. So that's my opinion. <laughs> but, um, uh, okay, I understand what you're saying, but um, that kind of also has a two-sided thing in the fact that you're saying, or maybe not two-sided, but that's a little general to say that uh, compile they as every single person in that religion, which is the exact same thing as... I was actually being more general than that. I was well, saying well, they as all religious people in, in No, 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 in no total, but I mean like but, people that... I, like, had, I was trying to cram it all into two minutes, so... Yeah. Well, that's fine, that's fine, but that's also kind of similar to saying they, uh, the Muslim people that crashed into the World Trade Center, um, because if you find, if you speak to probably any Muslim person, they will say that that does not describe um, a Muslim so, um, well, in actuality, yeah, though, there clearly are some who thought that that yeah. was justified. Yeah, and not not everybody who belongs to a particular religious faith is going to become an extremist. Exactly, but, but right. there are extremists, right. even extremists, even in. Uh, I, please forgive me, but I don't know if, if atheism is a religion. Is that how you call it? It's a philosophical, philosophical position. Philosophical. Okay, um, I just wanted to make sure. But um, yeah. okay, so there are probably extremists in your situation, and uh, people that aren't quite so radical in that sense. So to kind of group and say that everyone is going to be like yeah. that, not yeah. oh, in yeah. intellectually you know, you, uh, ask you questions and try and find out is kind yeah, of a little... Okay, no, that's a, that's a real good point. Um, let me be clear, if I may. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, okay, I do not believe that, let, let's just take Islam, because we were talking about September 11. okay? I don't think that Islam is a belief system which automatically turns everybody that believes it into a terrorist. I don't believe that. But I do believe that, uh, that if, that, that many of the teachings in Islam, taken literally or too seriously, by people who are looking for excuses to do stuff like fly airplanes into buildings full of innocent civilians, uh, that, that those parts of that religion appear to those people to provide a justification. And I think that's dangerous. Isn't that in every religion, though? Yeah, yes. it is. That's the problem. I with don't that. think it's in atheism. And of course, you, uh, you are you are willing. Uh, I would have. I would have. I have not met every atheist in the world and every possible thing. Well, well, hang on, hang on. A here is it. I'll give you all of atheism in a nutshell. Okay, atheism is not believing in any gods. That's it. It's done. So that's how, where, there's where no. Where there's no big. Say, don't there's no wrong. Big, Hold that, on. That, there's Hold no on. justification for you what? to say that. That say you don't believe in a god, okay? Yeah. But and mm -hmm. you talk about throughout this whole show, you've been talking about. Yeah. Well, we have our morals and everything. We don't need a god to tell us what our morals are because you know right. if yeah. you slap someone and it hurts, it's going to hurt, right? Uh, yeah. So, but where? But that's not atheism. There. Okay, that's, but but you're saying though that you don't need a god to tell you what to do or anything like that. Yeah, that yeah we think that moral moral right. precepts can be arrived at we, perfectly, perfectly rationally. rationally. And okay, pretty, but pretty much okay, okay, well, not rational. Well, we, Hang on, we've we we run to, out of time. Go ahead right, and finish yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, so, right. what if uh, your moral, um, just whatever you do, is not um, established? with uh, a good. I mean, what if the thing that you come at, because you have no God, is to do evil? I mean, there, I'm positive but there are people like that. Everybody the else in society the, the, will not... come down on us like a ton of bricks. And, yeah. and besides, well, that's people, exactly well, what happens people, to other religions, too. But, but Samantha, somebody who says, there's not a God, therefore I'm going to just go running you know, wild, killing and stealing and doing bad things, th that person's not being rational. 
Okay, well, but, that's the same but, thing as if but, I'm going to go not, and but that's then not go atheism. to the atheism. World Trade Center. Huh? Do you think that was rational? No, heck no. Exactly. But, no, but, every but, religion, you but, just said wait, it. I, just I said don't. It. I <laughs> don't, but hang on. Okay, hang on. If, if you believe that Allah wants those people dead, and you believe that you got a justified holy war going on, and you believe you'll be rewarded in heaven with uh, with virgins and stuff, right? If you got all those beliefs from your religion, then, given those beliefs, it is rational to fly that plane into the No, it is not. That it's, is a, that's why it's, it's so creepy. That it's the beliefs. beliefs. It's the it's beliefs, beliefs that, that are irrational. Yeah. That. And then taking the beliefs seriously is what leads to the danger. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we're fresh. Know. We're fresh out of time, Samantha. Well, thank but thanks you. a lot. I appreciate All right. It. Please call back again next week. These guys would like. To okay, we're done. To uh, the, the email address is just on the screen. If you didn't make it on the show today, and I apologize to our last two callers who are waiting. We never get to everybody. The email address, if you want to ask us questions, atheistexp exp at yahoo.com. Every week, check the email. We'll read the two most interesting letters on the air and answer them. Uh, thanks to all of our callers. Uh, and it was a good show. I enjoyed having you back, Jeff. Thanks, Mark. Yes. You got to get a lot out of your system. I, Must I have did. been fun. I did. I that was terrific. It. Uh, Ashley, thanks again. Thanks to our terrific crew. Love thanks, Rings. everybody. We are here every Sunday, 4.30. We